Yeah. Now we on the real side of things with my man MH. Yeah, he yeah. gonna give us a little tour of what y'all might have thought was a hotel. Look, we had to take our shoes off too. Yeah, yeah, you gotta take your shoes off. <laughs> Give y'all a little tour. We we're not gonna go inside because you know you got people sleeping on the on the post. Uh, well, uh, a new album coming out. Third mm-hmm. uh, third solo album. Very excited about it. Uh, it's called Veteran. Make sure that everybody knows about it. Gets the word spread out, you know, amongst everybody evenly. So you know, when it comes out November fourteenth, I want everybody to be lined up and in, in line to go get it. Got the first single out, Favorite Girl. Well, the single it's called Favorite Girl. Um, mm-hmm. I wrote it with a, I co-wrote it with a guy named Andre Merritt and uh, Brandon Howard produced the track. And uh, it's the whole album is personal. The whole album is kind of like a, a take off of my life and my situation and what I've been through okay. for the last, you know, couple of years up to now. And just you know, favorite girl was uh, about a relationship that I was in, involved with. And uh, me and this girl, you know, was on the phone one day and I was like, you know, you're my favorite girl. And she was like, oh, you should make that a song. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'm making this, I'll write a song about you. It's cool. <laughs> you know, so just doing a little bit of that. And then we ended up going to the studio and, and making it happen. So, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your favorite. Yeah. So is this normal? To, this how you come into New York? Now, most people, you know, you fly and then you sail in. What's, what's yeah, going on, Mark? You, M-H? you, you, you fly in, you know, sometimes, <laughs> you know, I, I just like to, I just like to travel, man. You know, whatever, uh-huh. whatever I could do to, to be comfortable with it. You know, that's. That's the view you get, you know, mm-hmm. out there. We took, we took a trip last night. It was actually my first time seeing the Statue of Liberty up close. Okay. Know, we took a sale last night. So it was, it was fun, but you know, you, you just get this. Now tell me know. this, man. What do the ladies love about you, man? Give us uh, a little insight. What, what do you think they like the most about you, bro? Uh, the door is locked, but you can see this. It's, it's uh-huh. another room. Little bar. Look like a nice little bar yes. up in there. It's in there, you know, locked up. We, we keep the top locked up all the time because, you know, I know that's for that, that, that. All access. Somebody that have all access and need to come up in there. Exactly. You know what we mean. You no. Know? So, uh, you know, I think what the ladies love about MH is, uh, they can tell that I love them. <laughs> you know? Tell me a little bit about the competitiveness of a solo R&B artist, man. Like, you know, is it much like the rap game? The rap game, Cats is always beefing, going at you know, each other. I, I but who keeps you on your heels, man? I think in the rap game, that's just how it is, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I never let my ego get involved and try to be competitive because I feel like, you know, whatever whatever my plan is from God, he has my, my, my footsteps planned. And, you know, as long as I do what I need to do by him and stay on the right path and stay focused, then, you know, there's room for everybody. So I never mm-hmm. really... I never really concern myself too much with competition. Or, you know, I respect every artist that's out there doing their thing, you know, from all the solo males out there that's doing their thing. So who are you listening to right now outside of, you know, getting prepared well, for your album? Who are you um, checking? Who are you feeling? Who you think is making a difference in R&B from your perspective? Uh, I really like Chris Brown. He's a mm-hmm. good kid, you know, he's a really humble cat, and I think I think he's doing his thing. Of course, let's, we don't even have to state the obvious. I know Omarion to me is you know, <laughs> he's the king of the, of the, of the young young solo That's the king, huh? That's the, that's the king. Did he get that from artist. Big Bro or what? You know, um, I, I think he's better than me, you know, yeah. in a lot of ways, because, you know, the generation is always better than the, uh-huh. than the older cats. So, you know, but he just... It's, it's, it's with him and dance, you know, it's just something that, that he does when he feels the, the music and the rhythm, you know. He, mm-hmm. He's an amazing cat to watch and just, you know, stepping outside of being a brother, you know, just watching him as an artist and everything. I, I have a lot of respect for O as an artist and as a person. And like I said, Chris Brown, like, and, and Neo and just all the new artists that are out there doing their thing, you know. And it, it feels good to know that I, I've had something to do with, and with influence in all their careers. So, you know, that's a really great feeling when, you know, you can meet a person they say, you know, I listened to you growing up and stuff like uh-huh. that. It's a really great feeling to know that you inspired some of the, the new, new young, fresh talent out there right now. Outside of the music, man, what does M.A. I'm, like I'm to not, do? Like, M.A. seem like he comes from the street a little bit. I do. But he try to be clean a little bit for TV, but nah. we, know we the street, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I do come. You know what I'm saying? I, I grew up 50, 52nd in Brinehurst, right over uh-huh. by Crenshaw and Slauson in the hood, man. So, you know, I definitely I definitely come from the streets. You know, What's I know some of the things you've seen in your hood as you was coming up? I know you got into the music business I got early. into it pretty early, but, you know, I've seen gang banging. I've seen drugs. I've seen violence mm-hmm. and stuff like that. People getting shot, beat up. You know, I, you know, I experienced all that. 
that, you know. So a lot of people don't know that part about my life, you know, because yeah. I keep my personal life personal. But, you know, I've seen a lot of growing up on the streets, you know, just a little bad kid from the hood that was like, you know, just just trying to make my way in the entertainment business. Mm-hmm. Is kinda, it's kind of what saved me from, from going that right. Because I... That right, I definitely probably would have been a thug or a gangbanger or something like that. <laughs> I definitely think it, it's it's cool though, you know, growing up like that because it, it gives you a sense of reality. Yeah. You know, and definitely. I never I never forget where I came from. You know, I still I'll still go to the hood and just, just drive around by myself and just, mm-hmm. just chilling, you know what I'm saying? Just say say what's up to people and just I'm I'm never one of those cats that feel like I'm too good for the hood or I'm too good to, to go back to the streets or anything like that. I'm too good to go anywhere. Like I I you you catch me somewhere just chilling. You know yeah, what no, that's what it is, man. Because yeah. I think people need to see that. Because sometimes people, you know, they dress you up to be like, you know, the superstar, which yeah. you all can't take that away from you. But at the same token, a lot of times people know that yo, I can still come to my. I'm hood. real, you know. I, I like people. People like me. I, I like to get down. I like to see. You know what I'm saying? I like uh-huh. to go back and, and see what's going on in the hood. You know, and just just not even the hood so much my hood, but just like in the streets and just see what's going on. I like to shake people's hands. I like to let everybody know that I'm real. Yo, what's up? This your boy, M.H. Marcus Houston. I'm chilling with my big homie Craze right here on All Access.